Well guys, another day from uh, up on the mountain, riding our longer travel trail bike category. You know, most people refer to them as enduro bikes or the all mountain, all mountain. category. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, um, we did some laps on the uh, the new, um, the first carbon bike from Nolly, the Canadian company. Um, it's, it's the Warden, it's the Warden Carbon, and the bike has 155 millimeters of rear travel. It's specced with a 160 millimeter fork, and uh, it has the Fox per, uh, factory suspension and X01 drivetrain, and that retails for $72.95. Um, the frame is also available for $32.95, and you can get this entire same spec on an alloy frame for $59.99. So, um, given the terrain we have here in Arkansas, how the bike treat you? I haven't ridden an Ollie for a few years, and they're they're pretty Neither. thin on the streets. You don't mm -hmm. catch them down south much. No Buckley's a He's a, one of those incredibly intelligent uh, suspension designers. He really, really sweats the details of his of his designs. And this was a this an interesting bike. I was a little conflicted in some ways, though. Um, yeah, where we were riding today it was just lots and lots of rocks, mm -hmm. up and down. And you could get moving on some of the downhill stuff, but there were also some places that would try to rob you of momentum a little bit. I had trouble kind of like, at times, keeping it moving. And it felt like it, there's this really, really plush suspension. And those are, I mean, nice suspension components on what I think is a good shock absorbing suspension design. But it also at times felt like it just sort of, like when you stood up to pedal, or if you're like trying to like snap a few pedal strokes into something, mm -hmm. it wasn't too enthusiastic about that. It felt like I just wanted more gravity. And I tried to counter it by adjusting the because it's super adjustable suspension. I tried loading some more compression damping into it and got to behave pretty well. I could use the flipper switch when climbing and that was all good. But each time that robs you a little bit of the suspension activity. And when you, when you stiffen up the compression damping, kind of at that point, it, it, I'd start losing climbing traction or mm -hmm. there would be some other compromise. So it was like these, these two bikes in one in a way. On, for, with this bike, I, I kind of felt what you felt, whereas on some of these all-mountain bikes, I'm, I feel like there's a kind of a compromise where they try to make both climb well and descend well at the same yeah. time. This one, I really felt like they were catering towards the descending side. It did that yeah. really, really well. It descended better than it climbed in my experience, but I did only run it in the lower setting, yeah. so. How did it descend for you? Pretty well, especially on the straight ahead like red ledgy rock yeah. sections i felt like the wheelbase felt pretty long at that point and i was kind of accounting for its mm -hmm. stability in all those sections i was thinking oh it's maybe have it has a slightly longer than average wheelbase but i think that turned out not to be the case well, part for the course um, for this travel of bike it's about a 47 inch wheelbase that's right, yeah. kind of what a lot of these bikes are with this geometry now yeah. um I, I really like the way it descended i probably sounded like i was bagging on it before but it's, it's, I think it's a really competent handling bike and that suspension when you're pointing downhill is awesome. I, I didn't take any time to really get used to it. I mean, didn't, didn't require any time to get used to it. I jumped on it, I was riding as hard as I wanted. It was really comfortable going down. And after experiencing that, I kind of gave it the benefit of the doubt on the, on the climbing side, but, um, but running the suspension in the open setting was really helpful to get maximum traction in these very loose and yeah, rocky yeah. conditions. Yeah. It's kind of a catch-22 because you want, you want to have that extra suppleness for the, for the, uh, for the climbing, actually. Here. Yeah, I rode it in both geometry settings, and I went all over the map with because you've got adjustable high and low speed compression damping, mm -hmm. and I was playing with both of those. And I got to the point where you could pedal it uphill pretty well, but it came with a, with a price tag. It, mm -hmm. it would lose traction, yeah. but it would pedal better. But then it was also a little skippy, more skippy and chattery when you're right. on just like little to mid-size. As soon as you really start hitting stuff, the suspension again worked awesome. Yeah. So it was like, I, for me, I really like the spec on the bike. I like the parts, I like everything about it. Price tag for what it has mm -hmm. is kind of ballpark mm -hmm. for that sophisticated a bike. I felt like I wanted like two more weeks of riding it mm -hmm. because there's so much you can do with this suspension to tune it in to get this bike to behave a certain way. You know, this is a first carbon effort, and I thought that the, the dimensions of the frame and the way it looked, its aesthetics were really nice, and, and it didn't have any appreciable flex or wagon. It was like a good solid chassis. So it's a carbon fiber front triangle and seat stay, right? The chain stays themselves are still aluminum. Correct. A cool little thing is they have something called the trap door, which it's how um, you access the fully internal routed 
uh, cables, which is pretty sleek. They're, it's a very clean design, and that also will hold uh, the Shimano Di2 battery if you um, want to upgrade and go with uh, the electronic drivetrain. Um, and you know, Nolly is a they're you know a very cool, but you know they're a relatively small brand as far as in the big picture. So they only have you know four or five bikes in the line, and a, a brand that size you get kind of the boutique options, things you can add on. Like they, you can add the i9 carbon wheels for, you know, a pretty penny more. But then again, you can get a complete, a complete bike, alloy one, um, with the spec we have for under six. So there's a ton of varieties. You can really customize this with wheels and shock selection. And um, you can see those options online on their site. I wasn't, didn't know what to expect because it had been a long time since I'd ridden an Ollie and I was quite pleasantly surprised. Well, I was pretty impressed with this bike too. I really would like to get to get it out for some longer rides, like in something like, you know, around in coastal BC or Porcupine Rim Trail in Utah or something where there's like big, you know, steep descents with big ledgy drops and stuff like that, really to make the bike come into its own. It left me wanting a little more on the climbs, mm -hmm. but then again, if we were in those other places I just mentioned, mm -hmm. I think I wouldn't even be thinking twice about it. Yeah. I liked it too. I mean, if I, because I'm, an aging, weak cross-country rider. I tend to look for bikes that are gonna climb really well, and that's my thing. But if I was looking for a, like a park light or trail bike for just, if I lived in Utah, I would want something about this travel, and I really like the way this bike handled, especially yeah. in terms of how it just ate up bumps. Yeah. Like it, it really had a beautiful linear behavior to the suspension that it was nice. I liked it. Couldn't agree more. So there you have it. <laughs>